manifestation of God on behalf of Israel. God had chosen Israel in order for God to be for Israel the provider, God provider. And then God was going to be operating firstly in Israel and then God would, through Israel, God was going to operate a great work in the life of man, of everyone. And in, a, in the same way, the Lord also has reached our hearts. The same project, the glory of God, the salvation of God, what God has placed at the disposal of man, in order for man to receive his eternity, one day it was introduced to us. God one day chose us. God one day chose you. In order for you to receive, had a contact, had an experience with this project, with this work that was revealed by God, so that through this operation in your life, God could then operate in the life of those who are around you. And that's what God has done. God has led us to live moments, wonderful moments in His presence. We didn't know this project. We didn't know the work of the Lord. We knew something that was called religion, a denomination, a title something that was connected men but today we have learned today we have found we're discovering that besides this name religion god has for men a project a work of the holy spirit revealed by the holy spirit and this has does have a name it's not maranatha it's a baptist church or an assembly of god no it is the true project, it's a unique project that leads man to overcome everything that connects him to the world, to connect him to God. And one day God has revealed this to us. A few uh, have been living for 10, 5, 30 years, 40 years. A few even uh, have been living for 50 years in this project and a few even longer than that because every time that a man opens up his heart and make the decision to know what this mysteries of God God makes a point to reveal himself to, to them and that's what happened with Samuel here and Samuel instructed the people he said you need to seek the Lord you need to consecrate yourself to the Lord you need to fast to the Lord in order for God to operate in your life. And the people had, was awoken for this. They were led to seek sanctification and a closeness with God and obedience to God. And every time the man does this, the Philistine, they raise up against them. Every time that you show the desire to do the work of the Lord every time that you make yourself available to the Lord that you place in the lo in your heart the desire to be faithful to the Lord and to be obedient to God the Philistine are going to rise up against you the Philistine they were the natural enemies of the, the Jewish people of Israel they were the natural enemy like today the flesh the enemy of our souls they are the natural enemy of us. And every time that you do this, he will rise up. And sometimes might even think, like in Israel, they fear the Lord because when they heard that the Philistines were coming, they were afraid because they had already been defeated. And the Philistine now they went to fight with Israel because they had already been victorious in other battles. Now Israel for him was it was um, easy target, easy prey. 
and many times you may be afraid. Many times you allow yourself to be defeated because of the persistence, because of the attacks, because how easy it is to sin. But from the moment you place in your heart the desire to be faithful to the Lord, God will, will make you stronger. That's what happened. They asked Samuel, Samuel, do not stop. So, do not stop to plead to the Lord on our behalf. Do not cease to cry out to the Lord, our God, for us. My brethren, we spent the year 2017 and it already passed. I don't know how your year was. I don't know. I know how my year was. Many trials many attacks of the enemy but the Lord had helped help me out and in the same way that the Lord has helped you in the same way that the Lord has preserved your life that God opened up your doors and operated health and deliverance God operated in a wonderful way that only I know and only you know you know why? because the prayer was made the pleading of the, for the blood was made the intercession was made. And every time that the people plead to the Lord, every time that you kneel down, every time that you place yourself before the altar of the Lord, God will hear your voice. You will hear your prayer. He will receive your prayers. But it's not going to be only... It's not going to stop there. God's not only a God that receives our prayers, but God also answers our prayers. And the way God answers our prayers is in His own time. That's why I have been learned, learning, Lord, that's the situation, operate, and that's it. You don't need to be anxious. There are people that like, it has to be my own way. That's not how it works. Rest on the Lord. And Israel, when he pleaded to the Lord, when they pleaded to the Lord as for Samuel to, to plead. They didn't know how God was going to act. They just pleaded. Have mercy. The Philistines are coming. We don't have the means to face them. Lord, it is in your hands. And God acted. God answered. You know why? Because the project of God lead us to leave moments like this. If you are inside of the work of the Holy Spirit, if you are inside of this project, God will operate because the project of God, in which we are, is perfect. There's no time. The beginning, the end, the middle is the end, and that's how it goes. Because the time of God is, cannot be measured. Because for as long as you are faithful to the Lord, for as long as you plead for help to the Lord, God will hear and He will operate in a way that you do not expect, in a way that you cannot even imagine. Because the project of God is perfect. Every time that in the project of God you speak about the past, you're also speaking about the future. When you speak about the future, you also speak about the past. There's no time for God. That's what happened here. When Samuel, when he pleaded to the Lord, the word tells us that he not, do not only plead, but he also presented a sacrifice to the Lord. It was a gift. At the moment, there were living moments in which they were going to be all killed. But Samuel, he picks up a lamb, a suckling lamb, and offers it, it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord and the deliverance, deliverance came it was because the Lord Samuel offered what was the project of salvation for man one day in the, the present moment pleaded to the help for the Lord Samuel presented what was some, something that was going to happen in the future the sacrifice the lamb that was sacrificed in the holocaust it was pointing out to the sacrifice of Jesus Christ 
was the appreciation of what was going to lead men to understand the time of God. In the present, they made mention of the future. And today, when we plead for help to the Lord, when we pray to the Lord, asking a blessing for the future, when we plead to the Lord so that God may deliver us, may remove from this world, so that the Lord come to our help, when we plead to the future, we present the past. We go back to the cross. Because the cross was the most important point of this project. The cross was the present, concrete presentation of the project of God. And that's why when we are in the time of God, the time doesn't pass. Man needs to rest in the Lord. That's why we already have this promise, because the resource has already been given us, to us. The, the project was being revealed to us when Jesus dies and the, the veil was ripped from top to bottom on the temple. At that moment, we found out about the temp time of God. And to die, today we are in this time, this time, which is the, the perfect time of God. And when it happens, God manifests Himself in our midst. Because God is love. For the servant of God, God is mercy. For the servant of God, He is goodness. For the servant of God, He is mercy. He is hope. He is health. For the servant of God, He is salvation. But for the Philistine, God is God is thunder. For the Philistine, God is justice. That's what happened here. When the people pleaded, the Lord sounded a thunder. Because God fights our battles. You don't need to fight your own battles because the greatest of our enemies are defeated through the power of God and God God sounds as, as a thunder God shows his power and his glory in, on behalf of his servants that's why this year when you go through a trial if you need to face your battles, remember one thing. Present to the Lord a project. Make mention of a project in which you are a part of. God didn't call you to be an assistant, to be just a, a, a visitor, a guest here. God called you to be a participant on this project. And in Him, you can trust the Lord inside of Him. You can rest in the Lord. Because every time that you plead, and every time that you present to the Lord the resource of the grace, God will be love in your life. God will be mercy. God will act in a graceful, grateful way on your behalf. And against the Philistine, he will sound a tender. And he will be defeated. So in this year of 2019, you can trust in the Lord. That's what it is. <laughs> you got old, you can you end up living in the past. 2019, you can trust in the Lord. So God will act on your behalf. And now when the Lord defeats the Philistine, then Samuel, Come to the Lord and so make uh, uh, he puts the the stone there and make a, a landmark and calls it Ebenezer, which means the Lord has helped us to this point and well. 
the Lord has helped us to this day. That was that was that we're saying because truly God has helped us. But the meaning Ebenezer is the stone of help because the stone of help, which is Ebenezer, it is in your life, is in your home, is in your health. Every time that you need help, God is present. And what is being a stone of help for the church, stone of help to the servant, is being a, a stone that will cause your enemy to trip and fall. Every time that you receive victory from the Lord, is because a stone of help has been placed at your disposal. So then, in the year 2019, you may come to the end of this year and say, Ebenezer, the stone of help was present and the Lord has helped us to this day. May God help us, may bless us. Let us hear uh, a song.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to now getting ready to take part in the Supper of the Lord and the Supper as one of the feasts that the church participate on. The baptism, the supper. This moment is a special moment. It's a moment for the church, for the servant of the Lord. For those who are carrying the Ark of the Covenant. To, for those who are taking care of the Ark of the Covenant. For those that are consecrating themselves to the Lord so that the Ark remain in their lives. So the Supper of the Lord is exactly this. The Supper is the Supper of the Lord. If you are in fellowship with uh, whatever you congregate, if you are in fellowship with the body, if you are in fellowship with the Lord, you can also participate with us because you are part of this nation, of this, peop this chosen people by God, people that has been chosen by God. And the Supper is exactly this. We just make mention of the return of the Lord Jesus. Our desire is that Jesus returned. But in order for this to happen, we need to take part in the supper. We need to go back to the Calvary. Because that's where everything was opened up for us. It was there where all the project and the resources have been given so that you today may take part in the supper of the Lord. Because the only way for men to take part in the supper of the Lord is by confessing, confessing to God of our sins, making mention of our sins, and placing all of them in Jesus, asking for forgiveness, and believing that only the blood of Jesus has power to forgive man's sin. But it is with faith. May God this morning bless us. We're going to read a text. Invite Dickens to be here in the front. The text is located in First Corinthians. Because I received from the Lord what I was also taught to you. And the night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread and having given thanks, he broke it and said, Take and eat because this is my body that was offered for you. But do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup and said, the this cup is a new testament of my blood. Do this every time that you drink in memory of me. Because every time that you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. And so whoever drinks of this, eat of this bread and drink of this cup in an unworthy way will be blamed in the body and of the blood of the Lord. This is the important part. That's where Samuel instructed the people to consecrate to the Lord. Remove from your life the idols. Remove from your life anything that may prevent you from receiving the blessing of the Lord. The word says, examine yourself, man, and then eat of this bread and, and drink of this cup. You are going to be placing on before the altar of the Lord your sin, the, the guilt, the transgression, and asking the Lord strength to overcome the Philistine, to overcome the practice of sin, to overcome whatever, separate your, and prevent God from sounding a thunder in your life. Amen. I asked the deacon, Wayne, to pray for the bread, for the wine, and Luciano for the bread. First, Luciano. Lord, we glorify your name. We we'll praise you for this uh, feast. Uh, 
we present to you, Lord, the bread that represents the body of Christ. It was given for us in the cross in favor of our lives. We praise you, Lord, for the bread that was given to your church and all, all the deeds that you have done for us. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. Well, just, just pick up your cup and uh, the bread, but we'll participate all together. Just wait until we can participate all together.
And one on the back didn't receive the, the wine and the bread. All of those who were being baptized in the waters, water baptism, that's why it's important. It's an action of faith. That's what the word of the Lord instructs us. Because you, you are, when you are baptized, you are choosing, publicly choosing the Lord. You are making a choice. You are telling the world that Jesus truly is the Savior of your life. So you have been baptized and you are in fellowship. You can take part on the Supper of the Lord. The children, adolescents, they don't need to participate in the Supper of the Lord, but the blessing of the Lord encompasses them. The Supper is an action. But the blessing of the Lord is poured out and on the body to those who are in the presence of God. Amen. Glory to God. And you at this moment will be speaking with the Lord, confessing to Him, fighting for your blessing. Glory to God. Those who can, let us sing the song on our knees. If you cannot kneel down, you can remain standing. And, and we're going to sing softly. Glory to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Come, Lord, visit your people. Let's do Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My beloved church, to my church as victorious, I speak to the heart of my church tonight. 
and this morning I entered and now me is uh, restoring God because the foundations of the house are going to be restored. The God of glory would sound a thunder in your behalf. And I tell you, my children, that the walls are going to be strengthened by the power of my word. I'm closing the gaps and I am sanctifying my people. And at this moment, my children, I call you to pour out your hearts on my feet, at my feet. Because even those who are dead are going to be resurrected. And I'm calling the valiant of my work and the spiritual gifts that have been buried are going to be taken out and my people are going to advance in this place and in a short time my children you will remember of times that you missed in this place but you also remember my children that the glory of the second house is going to be greater than the first house I have a great project to do in, our, in your midst and my daughter this morning I scheduled a meeting with you for many times you have even asked to die you have felt the bitter taste in your mouth and the tears has been a consolation for you but at this moment I renew your life my daughter, I place you on your feet once again. The trial is over. The wind is over. It is time for victory. It is time to sing, to praise to my name. My children, do all those things in remembrance of me because I'm accepting your praise, your thankfulness, in my author. Oh. Let's be in the Lord. Let us all participate firstly of the bread and then the wine. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Let us sit down. We're going to have a word of adoration to the Lord. Lord, we praise you because it's wonderful to be in your presence. We praise you, Lord, because we have not lacked anything in our lives. We praise you for this supper this morning. Because you are the one who brought us to this place. You are the one who has sustained your people every, every day. The trial comes, but you are with us, Lord. You have fought with us in everyone. We can say, Lord, we are more than victorious in you, Lord. Exalted be your name, Lord. Because you are a powerful God has spoken in the midst of your people. We prepare heavenly mansions to your people. Where will we go, Lord? That's where we're going to be, Lord. We are anxious for this day. Your church rejoice, Lord, because every day you have fulfilled your mess your promises, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done. We know, Lord, uh, you have more things to do in our behalf, Lord. We count on you every day, Lord, because we can say, Lord, that we are blessed people. You are people that have been, uh, has the rock as our foundation. You have sustained our steps, Lord, and made us more than victorious in you. You praise you for everything. Amen.
Church will stand up.
your name, Lord. Go to God. Thank you. 
Oh, to Jesus. Lord God, at this time, I want to glorify your name for your presence, your real presence in this place. Because, in fact, Lord, you have been our Ebenezer, our helping stone, everything that has sustained us. You are, you are the, the thing that has caused us to remain in this project of salvation. Was well, that this praise that we just sang may be a reality in our lives and that we may truly desire to live in the new Jerusalem and Lord we may be guests to participate in the the wedding of the Lamb and bless each one of us and so that we may know every day of your glory we praise you because you have helped us to this day take us home in peace is a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus in your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The congregation may sit down. Tonight our service is at 7.30. Everybody is invited for us to participate together here once again with the Lord. And March 24th, we're going to have a seminar geared towards the children, intermediary, and adolescents. So I ask the brethren to be praying for this topic and ask the parents to collaborate and to bring their children to the services so that we can do special rehearsals. There they are new to they need to learn the songs because they are going to be used here throughout the entire event to sing and also to invite the church will be praying to the Lord and we'll see the glory of God we have already in our hands the key for the new place it's completely paid amen glory to God God has given us a great blessing now we're going to begin the reform as the brethren may be praying for this topic. I'm going to schedule a day to bring the brethren to go there to maybe one day on this weekend to bring everyone to know and to begin to have love for the new place. We thank all the ones who visit us. Every Thursday and uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays. Peace of the Lord.